Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in England over this past week ever since the European ties ended. It was wild, uh, not only what was happening on the pitch but also if you look at calendar wise we had this round and we had makeup games all over, over the place so in that sense it was also wild but the table is nearing or the standings are nearing now a kind of um, normal feel. There are still a few teams that have games in hand, blah blah blah, but overall it looks all right. Um, wearing Liverpool to me, it's pretty pretty clear there to me had the best results. I mean they did a double over the Manchester teams which uh, for Liverpool is always great and on top of that they actually did play great. Uh, other uh, teams that really had a pos uh, positive, um, I keep wanting to say weak year probably, probably is in a way Arsenal. Although they will talk about there's also a lot of up and down of course Newcastle is sneakily moving just you know we talk about possible relegation for Newcastle they were last place not too long ago and now sneakily they're moving up moving up towards mid-table not that there uh, is anything happening but I think the main three talking points and it's actually great to have a league with three talking points it is I have four talking points four it is the FA Cup semi-finals, it is the championship race, it is the top four race and we still have a relegation fight as well. So loads of things to talk about to be honest and I think probably we should hit it one by one and I actually want to start in the FA Cup semi-final because it had another City against Liverpool matchup. However, um, I kind of hinted at it in, uh, in I think a Champions League review that City here was definitely a disadvantage because they had the tougher game. Liverpool could rest the players against Benfica, City had the tougher game and you could see it in the lineup. Uh, City made many changes, which for City typically doesn't make much of a difference. However, a crucial difference was that it was not Ederson playing a goal, but Zach Steffen. And uh, I think it was all right for uh, Guardiola. The thought, the thinking is, is all right. Yeah, he's our cup goalkeeper. Let's have him play a semi-final. But I think he already missed uh, last year's semi-final. And this year also didn't uh, kind of bathe himself in glory in many ways. I don't want to say it's all down to him, but he made a crucial miss mistake and allowed Mane to make a 2-0. Uh, funny thing was I had my brother invited who was visiting from Switzerland. And I told him, come to me. We'll watch uh, the two best uh, teams in the world play each other instead of uh, getting me miserable watching Lusk. And so we did, but at halftime it was kind of, yeah, yeah, Liverpool up 3-0 and thoroughly deserved because Liverpool played with the first team squad. Uh, it actually starts out early 9, that maybe Konate uh, had, had, had in the Robertson corner. Uh, he's on a roll after corners at the moment. I mean, he did it twice against Benfica. Now he 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 does that against City, and then of course the two two nil where uh, back pass uh, Stefan cannot really control it well. Or you see the first touch, he's actually doing doing well, and then he wants to kick it away, but the ball is not there in a way. And Mane is pressing and just slides in and uh, puts it in the internet. At that point, there was almost no coming back for City, to be fair. Uh, and then I actually thought the best goal was a brilliant move and then Thiago uh, tees it up for Mane who volleys it into the net. That was an awesome goal. I know people are blaming Stefan for that one. I think this, even if he was a little bit further, I don't think he could have really saved that, that one. That was a brilliant goal. Uh, a 3-0 at the half. As I said, there was not really a way coming back for a City. However, it got tight. I mean, Grealish pulls him back right after the half. But uh, Liverpool hang on, and then only very, very late, uh, 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 Bernardo Silva adds a 2-3. But, you know, um, it was already done at the half. Again, Klopp and uh, Guardiola uh, embracing afterwards. Although it was not such a, a prominent embrace as it has been after the draw uh, at the Etihad. Um, the other semi-final was a little bit more of a boring affair. Uh, it was, you know, Chelsea needed to be patient. Uh, again, Chelsea choosing to play in yellow. I think they think this is now their magical color and given what happened in midweek, uh, they're probably right. Uh, so Chelsea, despite being a nominal home team, playing yellow uh, and Crystal Palace uh, in their regular season. There's of course the uh, the story that their lone player, Gallagher, who's, who's crucial for Palace, cannot play. This is such an idiotic rule. 
let me put it that way. If you loan other player, let that player play. And I think this is only in England. I, I don't think, I mean, uh, I know in Italy for sure not, in Austria for, for sure not, because I have lot, lots of loan players from Milan and from uh, Lusk playing against their team and actually sometimes even performing well. So um, it, it's an idiotic role, to be frank. So, uh, but you know, in the end, uh, Room Loftus Cheek uh, came on and in 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 and changed the game. I mean, he 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 came already for the first half. He gets then the go ahead, has to go 65th and Mason Mount that makes it two nil. And we have another Liverpool Chelsea final that we had it just for the League Cup. Now we get it in the FA Cup as well, which should be a really really interesting. One. I mean, it despite it ending nil nil, this was a great final. And I could expect, I could see that this will be another great, great one, keeping also the hopes for Liverpool for a unprecedented quadruple alive. Although to be honest, I do not think it will happen. I actually can see very well that Liverpool get the League Cup. They end up runners up in um, in the Premier Premier League. Probably they make it to the Champions League final. Although I think if they will play against City, City in the final, City will beat them there. So there are two titles for, for City and then I can also see them losing to Chelsea as well. Although I think at the moment Liverpool are definitely the better team. So yeah, maybe it will be a 2-2 split. Liverpool winning the Cup competition and Manchester City uh, winning the Champions League and the uh, Premier League. At which point you would actually say uh, kind of a little bit of letdown despite two titles. A little bit of letdown of the season, wouldn't you? It all has to play out. I... Just don't think. I think Liverpool might as well get a triple, uh, a cup triple to to be honest. But I think, as as we've seen in the Premier League, it will be hard. And before we go back to the title race, I think we have to talk uh, top four struggles because it was so uh, almost uh, ridiculous. We were talking up Spurs. They weren't this role. They were tearing, 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 tearing all all up, and suddenly. Uh, Graham Potter uh, completely stalls Conte's team and a late strike by uh, uh, Tosa gives Brighton the win at Spurs, which it was not planned for. But at the same time, Arsenal went to the South Coast and lost to Southampton. So those two teams that uh, we uh, we really thought uh, were battling out for total for both with big losses, whereas Man Manchester United also not bathing themselves uh, necessarily in glory, despite a Ronaldo hat trick, um, he had also a very uh, first up and then very much down week. Uh, despite a Ronaldo hat trick, I mean Norwich had it, had it at two two at one point. So, uh, Cristiano scoring the first two, and then getting the winner with a free kick. Uh, I think right through the wall. Uh, that didn't look right as well. So yeah, um, not a glorious result, but at that point United actually looked kinda all right. As I said, uh, Newcastle um, is sneakily going going up there. Brentford continued their good good form. Also no relegation trouble in, 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 anymore. And Burnley get a point. Burnley get a point and West Ham um, uh, kind of, I think West Ham is not putting all the eggs in the Europa League basket. That's uh, how I'm thinking. Uh, they may hang on to a European spot, but we shall see. But then it was all about what, what about uh, the midweek fixtures. Um, uh, you know, may, 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 may the makeup games and we have round 30 it started out with Liverpool completely flattening Manchester Manchester United. Uh, I, I think it was so, was, was, was it three minutes in or something? It was so telling. There was, uh, Alisson had the ball and dribbled past uh, an attack. I think it was Rashford. Uh, placed the ball nice out and Liverpool actually started a really nice attack to, uh, attacking move where the ball then ends up with De Gea who has to just punt it forward. And that set the tone of the game. Uh, a little bit later, a brilliant pass deep uh, goes to Salah, who sets up Diaz. Uh, they are three against one, and it's one nil for Liverpool. And then there was no turning back. Uh, United didn't show up at all. And you know, yes, Cristiano Ronaldo had something horrible happening to him with uh, with the birth of uh, his twin boy. Uh, he uh, being a stillborn, which is something that uh, you know I am a parent. This is something I don't even want to imagine. Uh, this is unspeakable and. Uh, 
it was great to see Anfield uh, really respecting him, giving in a seventh minute, uh, minute uh, full minute of applause and support and also saying you'll never walk alone. I think it was a great gesture, but this was were all the gestures for Liverpool at, from Liverpool to United at that, at that moment. United did not show up. They looked like a disjointed, not a team. There was no fight in them at all. This was for me the most thing. They they were just surrendering to Liverpool, and I think if Liverpool had uh, turned around, it could have been uh, gotten even more ugly than it was at Old Trafford. The second goal, where Mane placed the ball to Salah after the ball seemingly was forever circulating in Liverpool uh, within the Liverpool team, that was rather special. I have to say, it, this was a brilliant goal. Um, and then at that point, it's two, it's two nil. It felt like four or five. Uh, Saadio Mane and then again uh, Mohamed Salah adds two more in the second half. Uh, the only positive um, was when uh, Rani in the 84th minute brought on Hannibal. He had some fight in him. I mean, he almost would have got guard himself self sent off. Young Tunisian national team player. Uh, I love that he has Hannibal. I mean, he's Medjbri, uh, but I, I guess for uh, first time Hannibal, and he has his head on, on, on the jersey. Hairdo, uh, very impressive. Totally uh, admiring that one. And he gave it. Uh, I think the referee had to have a talk with him. You know, don't mess up your debut. I assume it was. Don't mess this up. I want to keep you on the field because you're going uh, apeshit here in many ways. But yeah, absolute destruction. At that point, Liverpool even had the, uh, uh, the lead in the league table. And there was a just a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny uh, moment where you thought, yeah, uh, Manchester City might not. Uh, yeah, it was on nil-nil at the half against Brighton. Brighton just doing Spurs. No, Brighton had no chance against City. Uh, in the end, Mares Foden. Uh, and uh, who is the third? Uh, Bernardo Silva again score three goals um, and uh, move, move on. The one thing with City though is our City seems seems to be a little bit beat up. I still think that just by the pure quality and by the depth of the, of, of, of the squad that they can pull it uh, out, uh, pull, pull, pull pull it off and win out. I don't see this beyond City. However, I have a really beat a bit of squad and. I have this feeling that Dell's games against Real Madrid coming up next week, they might be a season turner for them. Uh, if the, if it was not for the Champions League in there, I could see City really saying, yeah, it's an easy, uh, they'll win out and win the league. Uh, especially if Liverpool, uh, they also have a game at Spurs, for well, Spurs all to play for as, 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 as we'll see. So, you know, it's kind of up and down in that sense. Yeah, well, I still have a feeling it will be City overall. Uh, before we go back to yeah, uh, yesterday, let let's put it, yesterday Burnley actually beat Southampton. So Burnley, a team that we really thought is down and out, have now picked up four points again, uh, giving really really Everton a run for their money. So the, the relegation battle is, is isn't done yet. Everton themselves had a makeup game at home uh, to Leicester, where uh, they. Got a very, very late equalizer. It was an early goal for less than very late equalizer. And that point, I mean, uh, when, when it was scored, every, uh, everyone did not take, take into account the Burnley result yet. And it has, as we say, Burnley have a game more. It's still very, very tight. And we'll see that in the standing in just a little bit. I honestly, Burnley, who of course sacked Sean Dyche, so maybe this was kind of the um, uh, <laughs> impetus to kind of show the new coach what's happening. But I, yeah, does it? I don't want Everton to go down. I say that last time they are a team that should be in there for sure. And then the nuttiest game of the week was of course at Stamford Bridge where uh, Chelsea lost 2-4 to Arsenal in a absolute wild first half. It was super entertaining but if you enjoy uh, soccer to be played well that was not it. I mean the first goal by Nketiah was a horrible back pass by Christensen who just doesn't get enough speed and Nketiah goes in and squares it off. The equalizer by Chelsea 
Uh, awfully deflected shot, but you know, Timo Werner uh, gets another goal. Uh, I think it was very well played, uh, the goal by Emil Smith Rowe. Um, that, 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 that was a nice attacking move, but then all the Aspiliqueta goal, the way they pull out the Arsenal defense, ah, it l looked really, 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 really weird, I gotta say. Um, but the. Uh, the mistakes didn't stop there in the second half. Nketiah, again, uh, the Chelsea defense completely combusting. The only thing I have to say that very, very, very late on, very late, late on, the penalty should not have given up because it can not help Bukayo Saka. It's basically pulling down uh, Aspilicueta, who has no choice. He cannot move out because he is, uh, his arm is uh, clamped in. Uh, but the referee doesn't see it, and that VAR didn't get it. This should never have been a penalty. But you know, uh, at that point, Arsenal actually deserved it. Um, I think as soon as Arsenal made it 3 2, I thought that Arsenal was the better team at that point. And uh, that is a big, big result in their top four race. If we look at the standings, and I give you a nice graph in just a sec, if we look at the standings, um, let's start on top. Championship is now 57-43. Liverpool actually ha having still the better rating than City because they seem, seem to be wrong. But this one point advantage and a slightly easier run in, hence the advantage, I would say, to City. That's why 57-43. Top four race. United are out of it, but it's a toss-up between Arsenal and Spurs. Actually, I can tell you that in terms of expected points, Arsenal is just a smidgen ahead of Spurs, but Spurs have the superior goal differential. The, the difference. So uh, again, a toss-up, and almost a toss-up is also the relegation battle uh, between Everton and Burnley and Leeds United. Not quite out of it yet as well. Um, you see that Everton have a game in hand, so you know who knows who knows. Watford and Norwich are down. Uh, Burnley might still catch Everton, and as I said, that's not something I really want to see. Uh, before we go into uh, the games that are coming up next weekend i just want to show you a graph how uh the chances for winning the championship and the top four uh have been developing and let's start on the left side this is between city liverpool and chelsea you see that uh early november chelsea almost were fav favorites to win the league but they have been dropping off ever since uh we saw also do you know that, that this january february slump of uh, liverpool but ever since it has been getting closer and closer and closer. And while City are still squarely the, fav the favorites, the trend is that it is getting closer. And that makes it highly, highly interesting. And on the right, you see the madness that was the top four battle. At the beginning of the season, it was all United. United's chances are all but gone. There was West Ham. Uh, United are the uh, red and black dots, Arsenal are the red and white dots, uh, Spurs white and blue, and of course West Ham uh, in their colors. West Ham, uh, right at towards the end of the year, was in the conversation, but it was Arsenal. I mean, there was a point uh, late January where Arsenal, uh, Spurs and um, United were kind of head to head. But then Arsenal started this run and were real clear favorites to win it. And then just with uh, those three losses after the international break, suddenly are completely out of it. And it was all Spurs now, all level again. This battle, I think it's impossible to call. It may come down to the head-to-head -head that should have happened any, any, anywhere along uh, time and time ago between Spurs and uh, Arsenal, I think mid-May. That will be a huge one. That will be an absolutely uh, tr a huge match. But I have a feeling it will end up in a draw. If the teams are level, a level, a level, a level on points, it might as well end up in a draw. I think this will be really showing. I cannot call it. I think that of the two Spurs, I have the better coach, probably have the better squad. But Spurs are Spurs. Arsenal have the youth. And maybe now with this uh, win at Chelsea, a big shot in the arm on their set. So yeah, uh, it's anyone's guess if you ask me who will move on uh, to uh, to the Champions League there. Uh, we have actually another huge match, potentially huge match, uh, in that race between Arsenal and United. United need to win this one if they want to get into the Champions League. I just don't quite see it, to be honest. Um, uh, Tottenham have to play at Brentford. Also not easy in the way that Brentford have been going as of late. Uh, Chelsea, West Ham. Um, 
toss up in many ways because West West Ham will all focus on the Europa League and Chelsea probably will, could get the win there. Um, uh, we have then the relegation battle. Burnley have to play at home to Wolves, a Wolves team that was in the Europa League fight but uh, might just fall outside of that one. And then uh, Liverpool at Everton, a derby, but I really don't see Everton getting anything out of that one. So yeah, uh, loads to play it for. Um, yeah. It may well be that uh, Burnley is ahead of, uh, could be ahead of Everton uh, come the end of this round, and then there are four games left and a makeup game as well. Any case, I would like to know uh, where you think all these races are going, what you thought about the action in this past week. Uh, will Liverpool do the quadruple? Let's see. I want to hear your opinion. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.